Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is two and three wire control circuits for fluid power systems. Our objective is to take a brief look at two and three wire control circuits for fluid power systems. We'll discuss applications fitting their use, differences between them, and important safety considerations. This lecture operates under the assumption you have watched the basic ladder logic lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Control circuits for electrically controlled fluid power systems are divided into two general categories, two-wire and three-wire control circuits. Two-wire circuits are ordinarily characterized by automatic switches, like temperature, float, or pressure switches, and are suitable for applications in which the automatic movement of a fluid power actuator would not present a safety hazard. Two-wire circuits do not use a holding circuit. Three-wire circuits, in contrast, are ordinarily characterized by momentary switches like push buttons and a holding circuit. A three-wire control circuit is suitable for applications where the unexpected movement of a fluid power actuator would present a safety hazard. Let's examine a two-wire control circuit first, since they're the easiest. This example illustrates the logic behind a cylinder that opens an exhaust vent. The ladder logic diagram for this circuit couldn't be any simpler. Let's say pilot voltage is supplied by an appropriate DC power supply. The first and only rung in the pilot ladder logic is a series connection of a normally open temperature switch, TS1, and the A solenoid of directional control valve 1, DCV1, sol A. When temperature rises to the predetermined set point, the normally open temperature switch closes. Via the now closed temperature switch, DCV1, sol A, is energized. The energized solenoid shifts DCV1 to the straight through position when the single acting cylinder extends, opening up the exhaust vent. After a sufficient quantity of hot air has been exhausted, temperature in the condition space drops and the temperature switch reaches its reset value and reopens. DCV1 sol A is de-energized and DCV1 shifts to the cross connect position. The spring retracted, single acting cylinder retracts and the exhaust vent closes. This illustrates the basic function of a two-wire control circuit. The hydraulically opened and closed exhaust vent cools the space with no human intervention and electrical connection to the solenoid is made or broken at the direction of the temperature switch. The title two-wire control circuit is derived from the two wires leading to the controlling element, in this case the temperature switch. Consider an important fact about this circuit. If the pilot supply voltage experience a power outage, the spring-retracted single-acting cylinder would retract and would obviously not extend. However, upon reapplication of the pilot supply voltage, the cylinder could suddenly extend if the temperature switch is still being actuated by a temperature in excess of the set point. It is for this reason two-wire control circuits are sometimes called low or no voltage release circuits. If there is a loss of pilot voltage, the control circuit will de-energize. However, upon reapplication of pilot voltage, the actuator might suddenly move if the control device remains closed. For obvious reasons, two-wire control circuits are used only in applications where the automatic movement characteristic is desirable and there is no danger of injury. Consider the safety repercussions of two-wire control circuits. If you are a technician that has been tasked with the investigation of this exhaust vent's failure to open, the cylinder would extend the moment you fix the problem. It is for this reason lockout and tagout procedures exist. Let's now examine a three-wire control circuit. This example illustrates the logic behind an operator-initiated extension and an operator-initiated retraction of a hydraulically extended, spring-retracted, single-acting cylinder. The ladder logic diagram for this circuit is essentially a repeat of the holding circuit we introduced in the basic ladder logic lecture. Let's assume pilot voltage is again supplied by appropriately rated DC power supply. The first rung, consists of a maintained contact normally closed e-stop in series with a momentary contact normally closed retract push button in series with a momentary contact normally open extend push button in series with a coil of control relay CR1. The second rung includes a normally open holding contact CR1A associated with a CR1 control relay in parallel to the momentary contact normally open extend push button. The third rung consists of a normally open contact CR1B associated with a CR1 control relay 
in series with solenoid A of directional control valve 1, DCB1, sol A. The title 3 wire control circuit is derived from the three wires leading to the controlling elements, in this case the combined e-stop, retract, and extend buttons. Importantly, a three wire control circuit is instantly recognizable because it has a holding circuit and uses momentary switches. Let's give ourselves some room here and see how this thing works. If an operator were to press the extend button, the momentary normally open extend switch would close, and via the e-stop, the retract, and the now closed extend button, the coil of control relay 1 would be energized. When the coil of CR1 energizes, its associated contacts would change states. The normally open CR1A contact in the second rung in parallel with the extend push button closes, and the normally open CR1B contact in rung 3 closes. The now closed CR1B contact energizes DCV1 sol A. The energized A solenoid shifts DCV1 to the straight through position and the single acting cylinder extends. If an operator were to release the momentary contact extend button, the spring return would return this button to its normally open deactivated state. Note that the now closed CR1A holding contact maintains the energized state of the CR1 control relay coil. This means that the CR1B contact stays closed and DCB1 sole A remains energized, meaning DCV1 remains shifted to the straight through position and the cylinder continues to extend. That's the point of the holding circuit and maintains the last asserted state. The cylinder will extend until it reaches the limits of travel and the pressure relief valve opens and then it will stay there. To retract the cylinder, an operator must press the retract button. The now open retract button de-energizes control relay CR1 coil and the associated contacts would return to their de-energized state. The CR1A holding contact opens, removing the path in parallel to the extend push button. The CR1B contact opens, which de-energizes DCV1 sole A. The spring offset DCV1 shifts to the cross connect position and the spring retracted single acting cylinder retracts. Notice that while in its deactivated closed state, the maintain contact e-stop in no way, shape, or form affects functionality of the system. When an operator presses and releases extend, the cylinder extends completely to the limits of travel and stays that way. When an operator presses and releases retract, the cylinder retracts, ready to initiate another extend and retract cycle. If, however, an operator were to observe an unsafe scenario, by hitting the maintained e-stop, the cylinder would retract and the system would be disabled. Importantly, Due to the maintained rather than momentary nature of the e-stop, the system will remain disabled until the e-stop is reset. The extend button will not energize the coil of the control relay, and as such, DCV1 sole A will not energize despite repeated attempts to do so. That's the point. The maintained e-stop has disabled the system. Only after the e-stop has been reset and returned to the closed position can the system now extend the cylinder. Compare and contrast the behavior of this three-wire control circuit with the behavior of the two-wire control circuit experiencing a power loss. When the pilot voltage is lost, the spring-acting cylinder will retract. However, upon restoration of pilot voltage, the cylinder will not automatically extend since the holding circuit has dropped out. For this reason, three-wire control circuits are often called low or no-voltage protection circuits and that an operator is protected from an errant unexpected movement of an actuator. Only when an operator makes the conscious decision to extend the cylinder by actively pressing the extend button does the system do so. Alright, this about wraps up our brief introduction to two and three wire control circuits for fluid power systems. We'll be making use of these configurations in later electrically controlled fluid power systems. Before we close up shop, let's do a quick review and comparison of the two methodologies. Two wire control circuits have two wires leading to the controlling elements. Ordinarily, two wire control circuits are composed of automatic switches like temperature, pressure, or float switches. Two wire control circuits are suitable for applications in which the automatic movement of an actuator is a desirable characteristic. These circuits are commonly called low or no voltage release circuits and that a power failure will de-energize the system. However, upon restoration of power, the actuator may automatically move if the controlling element is still closed. Two wire circuits do not use a holding circuit. A three wire control circuit, in contrast, 
has three wires leading to the controlling elements and incorporates a holding circuit. Ordinarily, three-wire control circuits are composed of momentary switches like push buttons. Three-wire control circuits are suitable for applications in which the automatic movement of an actuator is not a desirable characteristic. These circuits are commonly called low or no voltage protection circuits and that a power failure will de-energize this system. However, upon restoration of power, the actuator will not automatically move until an operator makes the conscious decision to do so. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at two and three wire control circuits for fluid power systems. We discussed applications fitting their use, differences between them, and important safety considerations. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.